What's up, guys? Uh, we are back with another episode of the podcast, the After Hours podcast, and we have two super special guests that everyone has been requesting for some time. Uh, we have On and we have Woody. And to be honest, like, I really have no idea what the direction of uh, this podcast today. They have this great topic they kind of want to talk about and how they want to take it. So, On, if you want to kind of start it off and, and give us what you want to talk about. Yeah, well, all right. Um, oh, sorry. Do you already start? Yeah, we did. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Oh, so it's interesting. Yeah. So, so uh, th- thank you, gentlemen, for having me on, and thanks for having uh, uh, Woody on too. I wanted Woody on today because uh, Woody's been my tab. He's he's been keeping me in line. You know, yeah. he, he kind of sets the rules, uh, sets the tones, and he, and he kind of slaps me around if I get out of hand. And that's why I wanted him on today because in case I get out of hand, you know, he, he's going to make sure that he keeps me back in line. Um, Do we have the buzzer? We have the buzzer if things go wrong. Is that what he has? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> buzzer. Uh, buzzer here too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we've actually, we've actually, to be honest, we've actually evolved because we were doing the. Uh, I don't know if you last time on did it. He was talking about with Bao was doing the nine volt battery, and yeah. Yeah. we sort of evolved to 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 this one now. So it's all good. <laughs> See, as, as you get better as traders, you develop and now you get better tools, you know, you, yeah. it's, all, it's cool. Instead of licking yeah. a battery for yeah. punishment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're trying to figure out how we can, we can shop each other through the phone system. So uh, that's we're, probably the next step. Yeah. Jeez, Woody, yeah, look at the or something. Look at it. Dude, look at the, the background, Woody. That's nice. It's oh, snowing yeah. out here. It's like, it's coming <laughs> down, bro. That sucks. Yeah, it's going to yeah. start here soon, too. Oh, Canada, isn't it just snowing all the time in Canada? Like, never stops. Pretty much. But this winter hasn't been bad at all. We haven't gotten that much snow, thankfully. Yeah, that's not bad. But, so yeah, so I guess, you know, on and, and Woody had this kind of idea with us, you know, that a lot of people know everyone's stories. You know, as traders, we all have very similar stories, we were just saying. And, you know, I think that they really want to dive into more, like, the developmental um, stages of be- becoming a trader. Um and I guess, you know, either one of you, if you want to like start it off and kind of give us your, you know, don't tell us, you don't have to tell us your story, but, you know, tell us like, how you developed recently and, and over time and what got you to like where you are. Yeah, I think that's a good start. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think um, the way I'd like to frame this, uh, this podcast, you know, from my perspective and, and again, Woody can chime in because Woody's a very experienced uh, yeah. elder, seasoned vet. Elder, <laughs> uh, trader um, is I want to frame it and think to, to help people think about, you know, certain things when they're trading. And, and so we're, we're going to coin this whole topic around trading can be like dating. Yes. Okay? And we're yes. going to talk about the follows. Miserable, yeah, some horrible. Crazy, yeah. crazy conversations about this. And there's some strong parallels and analogies to it. And, uh, and we want to keep this live, lively and funny because it is stressful enough. So oh, God. <laughs> we, got, we got to find a way to relate to it to help the next person. That's all we care about is, is passing on good karma to other traders. Yeah. You guys have been trading for a while, right? The both. How long have you both uh, been trading for? Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a sigh of pain. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I started full time in 2007. Jesus, dude. I was in seventh grade. Harry wasn't even born yet, I don't think. 2007? <laughs> I would have been uh, eight years old. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That feels great. That feels great. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So actually, before we even like dive fully in, how did you guys become tabs? Was it through MIC? Like, how did you even come to this? Is it just because you're both old and wanted to talk? Like, <laughs> No, man, it was pretty simple. <laughs> you know, so you guys know, I, I restarted again in June of 2020. Yeah. Uh, you know, I reached out to Woody and asked, hey, man, I need a tab. And and somehow Woody did his calculation, punched into the machine, <laughs> threw my name out of a hat, and it ended up being him. <laughs> so it's, it's awesome. I, I, I mean, to be honest, On and I have a lot of similarities. We're similar in age. Uh, we're yep. both short, short of bias. Yep. Um, we've been around the block a couple times. So if we talk about moving average, Fibonacci, um, you know, all that stuff, you know, we know what we're talking about and we're, we're, yep. we're in a, we understand we have to adapt to our market constantly. Yeah. This is a game of adaptation. If yep. you don't adapt, you die. Yep. I mean, you hear it all the time in the small caps room, you know, death is going on this week, you know, 
low hanging fruit going on next week. You have to constantly adapt. Well, we, we go to that level when we're talking, you know, what parameters to use and how we define those. And he is spooky smart. I mean, he gives me a run for my freaking money. I've been doing this a long time and he is spooky smart. There's no doubt about it. So we, we, we work well. And we have the same lingo in regards that we use our analogy to dating and all that stuff. So seriously, it works out well. Yeah, I, I just want to add, seriously, the way we talk, it's like two old guys talking about like dating. Yeah. Nailer. I mean, okay, <laughs> before I say things like this, I just want to say that. Um, There's the fucking beeper. Here, yeah, it's right. right. The beeper room. <laughs> I'm ready. It's just, a, it's just a frame that, you know, we're. We're figuring out, you know, it's just a frame that we're, we're trying to give you the psychology so that you can think through things um, a little more relatable uh, to, to when you're thinking about trading. Because trading a lot it is very similar in a lot of ways to dating. If you think about it, like you talk about low-hanging fruit. Again, not to offend anybody, you know. Behind. Well, I, I can also say with women, yeah. I've had several conversations with women traders, and they have told me so many times, GTFO, they are in a firm believer of. And I, I was sort of hurt when they said that. So, <laughs> what do you it's what not you disguise. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, hey, we'll keep it both ways, right? Like we'll have the uh, dating for like, you know, we can, we, if we refer to dating women, you know, it goes both ways. You know, if you're women yes. traders or whatever you're into, do whatever you want, whatever. But yeah, it's all dating. Right. dating in this day is, yeah, in this day and age, you're just saying Dude, it's not purely yeah. males. You, you could be it's dating both. this thing. Yeah. You have no idea. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Guys, whatever you floats your boat. Buzzer, if someone says anything wrong, like yeah, that, yeah. Mm. yeah, there you yeah, go. We're good. Oh, that, I, that's like that's like the wrong answer. That's yeah. right. <laughs> but I do want right, to say, right. like, I, right. I, lo I, I love, I love seeing. And I know this doesn't really stay on the topic, but I love seeing the tab program work. Yeah. And and seeing people become like close and friends because you, I mean, on you're you're you live near me. You're in Boston, and what are you down in Boca, right? Like you're, I mean, it's yeah. how, how else can two people? Me and Alex talk about this all the time. How can two people from across the country or on other sides of this, whatever, be friends and like be so relatable? And I just think, so I just wanted to say, like, I love seeing you guys do that. That's awesome. Through the internet, baby. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, 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 I mean, I could, there's, I mean, we could do a whole segment on matches that have been made that would just make you curl your toes where you're like, are you kidding me? But <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole different topic for another day. But yeah, please, on, go for it. Well, well, why don't you guys start asking some questions? I, I picked some topics out um, um, you know, just to kind of get the discussion going. But, but you guys. Maybe you like, guys, um, you know, to start it off, like, how do you deal with, like, FOMO? You know, something like, something simple as that. Like, you see a move happen. Let's see, you guys are, are short biased. You see a massive death candle happen. How, what, what, you know, what is some tricks that you guys have, like, that would help you kind of deal with that, you know? Okay, so so let's let's go back to let's go back to dating, right? How do you deal with FOMO? So how do you deal with a very attractive person you see all of a sudden walk into the bar, right? What, James, when you, you want to give a, an example, how do you deal with it? You jump all oh, in, man. jump all in your all your lines <laughs> well, on, say hey, how are well, you? Well, well, it's funny because like I love this, I love the idea of, of relating to dating because when I was younger. Right. And I think it goes with the whole thing. When I was younger, I, it would be FOMO. I see someone walk in. I'm like, I need that now. Right. Yeah, I need yeah. to do it right now. And you jump, you jump in as, as fast, you know, and usually that first like go around, you get kind of rejected. It doesn't really work. So yeah. So, yeah, I, yeah. 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 I, 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 would, I, don't know, I can remember this, but I was the deer in the headlights when the hot chick would come in. So <laughs> it's funny with me because like, I'm like, I'm a very patient person and what would happen with me, and, and maybe this is just my scenario, but when, you know, I lived in Halifax, other stuff like that, it was so weird because my friends would make conversation with the girl by talking about me, like, oh, this guy's a trader, you know, they, they, they talk about what I do, and I would just sit back and just be super patient, and then at the end of the night, or maybe halfway through, she'd come up to me, I'd have a conversation, and then, like, I mean, that would be it. My friends were like, oh, how's Harry getting with, like, you know, I don't want to, you know, hit the buzzer there. But, like, you know. <laughs> I'll do it for you. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, like, you know, it, it's just, like, stuff like that where I ended up being kind of in a lucky position. But let's say I didn't have trading. Let's say I didn't have anything like that. I'd still be very, very patient, I think, where you just kind of, like, you know, like, I think it's a lot of, like, it's a lot of chance and, like, a lot of luck. But, like, you know, it's the same thing in trading where it's like, 
if you don't chase trades, then the, 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 the money will kind of come to you. But if you're out chasing everything, going each direction, don't really have a plan, don't really know what you're doing, then I find you're a lot more prepared and you're a lot more kind of like in that, that better mindset to be able to execute and to be, to be able to perform better, right? So what you're saying, blondes are your niche. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? I, that, that's good. That's good. So, I mean, you know, you found your niche and you focus on that and, and it works. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that at all. You know, and, and you, at the end of the night, you have a good time. So that's, that's, a, that's a great way to put it. And it's just like trading, like Ann and I always talk about. Well, I think it's like, you know, you like kind of like to your question on you were like saying like, you know, how are you? And it's like, you know, I think, I think it's funny, right? Cause when you are in a rush to jump into like talking to someone or whatever, it's kind of like the same thing, right? Like with trading, you really don't have a plan. You really just jump into it and you have FOMO. You're like, I need to get with this girl. I need to get with this girl or this person. And you always, end, you end up fucking it up. Right. And at the end of the day, you do, you end up blowing up. And at the end of the day, like what Harry was yeah. saying, like I, as I got older, I recognized that not being the guy at the front of the line, trying to get the girl is usually the safest bet. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Again, that's, again, that's, that's the reason why I wanted to frame this because it's, it's a psychological game in that, you know, you, you, and you want, you asked about FOMO. Well, you know, you approach it, come in very slowly. I mean, again, I'm not an expert like Woody, you know, <laughs> But come in, come in boldly, right? Wait for the opportunity, and then and then if it looks good, then then you go on it. And that's and that's the same thing with with trading. You just gotta wait for the opportunity, and you'll know when the opportunity is right. Yeah, yeah. And that's what MIC totally. is, is identifying when the opportunity is right. So yeah. you just sit there and think about it. What would I do? How would I do it in real life? Put apply it to trading because you gotta remember, trading is all psychology. It, you know, I mean, there's a lot of computers out there, but the computers are basing it on human psychology. Yeah. And now they're basing it on like computer psychology too, because you know, they're trying to figure it's out it's amazing. What, what are the algos, how are the algos built a certain way, but those algos are basically built off of human psychology. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I agree they are because they know that they know that let's say short sellers have an average of like maybe 3.15. And they know that if they move the stock price up to 320, 330, people are going to start getting alarmed, you know, on that first dip, you know, everyone's going to try and cover. And we get that kind of move higher, move higher, move higher. By the time all the shorts are blown out and longs get that one dip that they want to buy, that dip ends up like being the shittiest dip ever because all the shorts, our natural bidders are all gone, right? And um, that's what I was kind of talking about today as well in like my own video that'll probably be out soon. But, you know, that is kind of what I find now. The main objective now is just, you know, trap a bunch of shorts, move it higher, boom you get a good enough price to dilute and then we're back down again. And that's kind of what I've been seeing. So if you're patient, wait for that backside move, you know, that's a, you, you know, you're putting yourself in a good position as a short to be able to kind of catch that move down. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Woody, how do you, I guess I, I, I kind of want to ask you, how do you handle FOMO on your side? Because I've traded with on as well. And like, I kind of, I, I've grown to understand how he does, but, for you, what do you do and how do you relate it to this kind of topic? I, I mean, like for me, um, you know, one of the smartest things I've learned from MIC and I didn't do this before and definitely going back to the trading analogy it is just set a bunch of freaking fantasy orders way out there. And, yep. you know, because what's happening in my mind is like, I got to do something, got to do something, got to do something. Okay, well, how do I take that energy? So I'm either going to be setting alerts which cost me zero, or I'm going to set these fantasy line orders that are a dollar or two away. And, you know, it's, it's keeping my brain occupied and waiting for that moment. And that's the thing is, is, you know, don't try to mind fuck myself. So that's, Did you, you time that, it wrong, man. That's, that's how I look at it. <laughs> I had to be like myself, that. sorry. It's really I good. like that though, because I mean, at the end of the day, right? Like, especially if you're relating it to like the dating world, like you can psych yourself out, right? Like if you, oh. if you oh, yeah. Uh, like, uh, yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, that's what FOMO is. I think you psych yourself out almost thinking it's the right moment or thinking you're missing something or whatever. Yeah. And then you yeah. end up missing it. You end up missing the entire play. And, so, so and like if you yeah. see the hot chick, you know, you got to go talk to your buddies, sort of distract yourself to wait for, for that right moment. So it's, yeah. it's, it's a similar analogy you know you don't want to be too like oh i gotta go now 
but then you want to be sort of cool about it. You know, wait for yeah. that moment. Yeah. All right, guys, I'll be honest. The reason why I got Woody on here was because we're talking about dating and trading, and I'm not an expert on dating, and Woody is. That's why we wanted him on. Oh, no, I, I, I'm, I'm living the Al Bundy lifestyle. I'm married with children, so. Al Bundy <laughs> lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm living that. Anna's the hero here. He's got the stories. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, it's cool, though. It's, it's cool, again, like, that you guys kind of have this idea of, like, you know, trading is like, you can relate, we talk about this all the time, you can relate trading to almost anything in the world, like anything you yeah. do, there's process, it takes patience, it takes yeah. discipline, whatever, the gym, fuck, whatever. But I like, I like this analogy, because I think that it makes a lot of sense. And, and I kind of wonder, like, how do you guys go about moving from FOMO, I guess, how do you guys go about, like, leveling up, like going to the next stages of trading developmental and like, getting better? Sure, sure. So like, let's talk about lines, for example, right? MIC teaches lines all the time. And, and you know, a lot of time the lines work, okay? A lot of time they work. But it, we're starting to see that there's instances now in this recent market that some of the lines don't work very well, right? And why is that, right? And so, so some of the thinking that I have on this, and again, it relates to dating, is that, you know, we have lines, right? All the guys generally tend to use the same lines, right? Yeah. Yep. Smart and the smart, the smart women or the smart men or, you know, the smart potential mate, or, you know, because we're being, you know, gender neutral here. Um, they, they know those lines. So you don't think those algos know those lines? You don't think those market makers have calculated out and know those lines? They do. And that's why we're seeing people getting blown past those lines all the time. Right? Yeah. So one of the ways to think about it, well, how do you, how do you figure out what really what, what another really effective line is. And, you know, if you think about it, well, in dating, you know, let's go find some really good lines. You can go back to the historical texts, like movies, right? Go back five, 10 years, like Jerry Maguire has really good lines in the movie. Yeah. Jerry Maguire. Had me at hello, right? You can yeah. yeah. right? Um, so that's what I always tell tra yeah, other traders when they ask me is that if they can't really see the line on some of these things, go back further. Don't just go back one or two days, no, go back a lot further, three months, five months, a year. Mm -hmm. Look for those lines. Look for the, the support and resistance then. And, and now a lot of times those may hold a little more strength than just the obvious lines because I'll tell you the obvious lines are also obvious to the, to the algos and the market makers. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, so I again. I just want to in there right? real What's quick. Um, yeah, and I think also with the lines, like it really does come down to a lot of the times who's trapped, right? And so what we've been seeing now is that the the algo will kind of uh, take, the, take the stock down, like we saw in that other A stock, right? The algo will kind of take the stock down or the market maker, whoever, and there aren't really a lot of like long participants there because as a short, you're playing against longs, as a long, you're playing against shorts, right? Yeah. And yeah. so what we see is that there aren't really a lot of long participants who are kind of trapped. And the resistance lines I find work very, very well. When we have a pre-market that has done one, two, three million volume, every single long is trapped and then we go higher and we, we're not doing enough volume to push past all those other bag holders. Where I find, you know, on, a, on, a, on something where, you know, longs aren't trapped at all, there hasn't really been many participants, we're gonna blow right through those, those areas, right? Because we're doing so much volume, maybe it's a low float, and maybe we go from like two to five just because there's no one trapped, right? And that's why I think as far as the lines go, as far as stuff goes like that, you know, we need other traders and other participants to be trapped in order to play off them, you know? So I think that's, that's something that I always, you know, keep in the back of my mind as well. I think well, right now too, like you're seeing like, like for example, like I kind of remember, like obviously when you're single, right? You're a whole like concept is like go out, you go to a club, a bar, you want to meet people, but whenever you went to the busiest clubs and bars, it was much harder to interact with people, right? Because like you go to a club, it's loud, it's hard. You, it's just, it, I think it's hard to make a connection. Whereas with trading right now, it's kind of the same thing. Like I'm look, I just pulled up all my charts from the week and I just wanted to see them. And it's like, you look at like these, these movers, like LAIX, JG, AEME, that front side move was so volatile. It was so busy. That was like the most packed club in the world. Everyone's getting in probably all these beautiful, beautiful women in there. That's the concept. And, and then look at what happened when it kind of died, right? Like you're at a slower pace and it just becomes so much easier. 
And I think that's kind of our theme right now. It's just that every the, whatever everyone's looking at is what you can't fucking touch as a short seller. Yeah. And yeah. Look at it's, it's a great way to look at it because now you're talking risk management. How do I manage the situation and adapt to the situation? So now you're walking into the bar. It's crowded. It's loud. There's a lot of hot chicks. So now when is it going to slow down so that you can make your move? What or what you're adaptable to? And it goes the same for longs or shorts. When is my time? What is the best time for me? When is the best time for me to adapt to it? And it's the exact same analogy when you really sit down and look at it, man or woman, in fact. Yeah. So a hundred percent. Yeah. And I was just for fun. What I like to do on a lot of stuff is like, I'll pull up kind of like the Google search trends. So, um, you know, a big way to gauge like how many new participants are in a market is just to Google the search trend, how to trade stocks, right? What we're seeing now is that there are more people trying to search how to trade stocks than there were pre-COVID, than there were yep. pre-whatever. So we have all yep. this dumb, long money that's just buying stuff up. So before in the other market, and I also, just for fun on like last Wednesday night, I was looking at some of my old tape recordings from like 2018, 2019. And you notice- The volume that, now is insane, Harry. It's insane, how dude. how much increased volume we're getting now, even in like the last week compared to anything else before, you know, before the prior, yeah. like, it's just insane. We have all these long, dumb money just chasing, slapping the ass. We have yep. short traders who haven't really adapted well, who are forced to cover higher. We're getting these yep. massive squeezes. And so, like, you know, Go ahead, sorry. Funny, yeah. cause like yeah. Bao or Alex or Tosh will just be like, all right, guys, avoid, avoid, avoid. And then we go two, three points higher, you know, that's been keeping a lot of people safe as well, I think. And also, you know, just the risk management, like me and Austin talk about, it. like if, if I know that I'm wrong, I'm stopping out right away. Instead, yes. right away. You know, you, you know, if you're, if you, let's say you have a fantasy order set at, you know, 260 and all of a sudden the price is at 280, you know, there's no reason to be in that trade anymore, right? So, yes. I mean, that's something that I, I just wanted to kind of add. Yeah. As well. I mean, ah. dude, I, I just put in, uh, I just had one of the members help me too. Like I put in a hot button for uh, hard stops and, and on was helping me too, like, I want to make sure at all times right now that I'm not like fucking around with risk. Like it's just, like, it's like, it's the, the, I, I have an opinion that I think this new volume we're seeing is not going anywhere for a long time. Like I think this could be two years plus of just new market participants and people think that the stock market or they're just finding out now is the stock market is the key to accumulating some wealth. And I think we have this younger generation that like doesn't really want to work. So they see that the market is like a casino. And, and I think that's how they're going to treat it for a long time. And right now, more than ever, like you have to be careful. You have to have your hard stops in. And it's just like what we're saying. Like if you go to the busiest place, you know, the odds are you're at capacity, you're going to get kicked out. It's going to be hard to meet people, everything, whatever. And that's the market right now on both sides is if you're yeah. playing what's the hot stock of the day, you're, you're just going to get fucked. Let me, let me just add to what James said about hot buttons. Um, so and this is kind of a, how the thinking goes. It, it, and I'm going to relate it to dating again, okay? Um, in this new millennium, this new era, it's, this is the era that er Woody and I didn't really participate in, but you have a lot of technology tools to help you with dating, right? You have like uh, Tinder. Tinder. You have yeah. Like, you know, people used to meet. Swipe so right. Uh, yep. You know, it was Match.com back then, you know, whatever. <laughs> Plenty of fish, like yeah. stuff like that. Well, I never, right? I mean, there's, you know, there's, there's, yeah. there's all these apps, right? I don't even know the name of the app, like yeah. coffee, it's bagel, right? <laughs> why, why can't you use? Um, James has been on Grinder a whole lot. Oh my god, I was gonna, I was saving, <laughs> I was saving that fucking joke for you, and I was like, no, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> all, right. all right, so, but you know, since you know, given that technology has also advanced on trading platforms. Um, I know the classic way to trade is just to manually put orders in. And, and again, you know, that's a really good way, but you know, why not leverage technology to, to um, ensure that you stay safe on the market. Right. And that's why I'm really glad that James, you started building hot buttons. Cause I, for example, I just built a hot button this morning and I'll share the code with everybody where right when I put an order in, it automatically puts a stop order in automatically. Right, right, right. When I fill on something, it automatically puts a stop order at that share size. And I, I want to just confirm: these are not hot keys. I, I, Anya, the same. No. I don't use hot key. Hot keys are for people, in my opinion, that have immense FOMO and want to hit every little thing. 
And hot keys are, in my opinion, the most dangerous thing in trading unless you are super, super fucking disciplined. Well, I actually have hot keys for stops now. Oh, yeah, like well, stuff like that, Skip. Yeah. Like, and a lot of people are like, you know, oh man, like you shouldn't have like a, a, a market order for a hot key. You know, the market makers can fill you wherever you want. There's slippage. I'm like, bro, you can't think like that. Like I'm, 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 I'm hitting my hockey out and I'm, I'm, I'm slamming that bit as hard as I fucking can. I'm trying to get billed wherever I can to get out because I know that I'm wrong. Right. Dude, my cover all, but I have a cover all button and it's my oh fuck button. That's literally what it is. It's like, if I need to get the fuck out, I'm going to get out. I'm going to market order out and I'm going to use that to my advantage. Like, like I said, that's technology. Why do you want to manually do it? You know? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Totally. You, you got to have a GTFO button. You have to oh. have that. Yeah. You know, the, the thing in trading that I've learned and like, on, I remember when we went out to dinner, you told me like to, to not compare myself to others. Right. And that's like, same thing with other guys that you go to a bar, there's a dude 10 times better looking than you. Right. And you don't want to compare it. I, he said Oliver Tan because he's a big fucking Jack dude. And you think about it and like guys like Alex, guys like Bao, their discipline is like super Saiyan, right? Like they can, they will stop out when they fucking have to, and they do it religiously every day it's amazing i've never seen people do this their risk management but for some of us it's not all like that sometimes you know especially when you're new it's hard to like make yourself get out and not compare to like other people like sometimes you need those little tools to like help you like get along yeah but, yeah i totally 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 agree with that you have to have those tools that's just survival mm -hmm. too where it's like you know there's going to be a time where you're wrong whether you like it or not and you're gonna need to accept that risk early on in order to survive in this game, right? Yeah. Like, I, I, I'm sure as hell, like, I'm, I'm honestly 100% sure that you could take a new trader who doesn't know anything and tell them, if you go down more than 10, 20 cents, stop out immediately. And if you had them do that every single time, I'm sure they would be profitable. As long 100%. as it's very high, you know, or yeah. stuff like that, I'm sure that they would be able to at least, they'd be, able to at least survive long enough that they kind of start understanding and start learning. But what happens to a lot of people is they're like, Oh, I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. Like, do you want to be right? Or do you want to be profitable? Because those are very different things, right? Those are two very, very different things. Dude, the market's so different now where like volume is fucking nuts, dude. Like I remember like a year ago, two years ago, if I had a stop out level, you could almost give it wiggle room. You could give it with like high of day. I used to give high of day 20 cents and like not even sweat it because the volume, you knew it. But now a stock, like I'm looking at freaking uh, JG from Friday. I mean, high of day was 950. Next thing you know, you're at 1250. I mean, these, you know, if you don't have the discipline right now to stop out, like you have to fucking do it. I mean, it's just, you're going you're gonna to die. And on the long yeah. side, look at it. It, went, it faded from 1250 to four. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know. Uh, how many how many traders are dead from GameStop? I oh, mean, how oh, many? Oh my God! I, I, mean, I mean, millions. Like it, it's not even. Yeah. I mean, who would have thought it would gone to five hundred? So Dude, hedge funds are dead. Billionaires yeah, I, are dead. Yeah, I, I mean, these guys are professionals. I mean, you know, you know, I I never saw five hundred from five dollars to five hundred. I mean, my fourteen year old busts my balls all the time saying, "Why didn't you buy it when it's at five dollars?" Oh my God. <laughs> And I'm just like, I hate you. And he's like, what's lines? Who cares about lines? It's going to go up. <laughs> Hold the line. Hold yeah, the fucking but, line. But, but, you know, going back to the generational issue, he is asking me, so how do you short? And he's freaking yeah. 14. So, I love it, though. I love that, dude. It's awesome. So that, that, that is like, you know, that is like my Google search when he's telling me what, and that, that's like telling me what's coming down the pipe. So this yeah. is going to be around for years and years. And I'm glad they're going to get educated in financial. I'm glad they're stepping up because the education yeah. system sucks. So yeah. I'm glad he's stepping and asking these questions. But yes, you dude, have to have risk manager. Have dude, for example, like I, um, I have a stack of MIC cards, like the business cards that I hand out to people just because people ask me all the time at work and I just would rather give them the card. They can text Tosh, whatever. Before GameStop, I would probably give out a couple of week, you know, a handful a week. I went in on Tuesday or whatever. It was gone. It was gone. There was like 50 cards there at, in the stack because everyone now is doing it. And, you know, if we're bringing this back to dating, like we are the guys that are like seasoned vets. We are the guys that are sitting there waiting and now we're prepared 
and we know how to like, we know what we like in dating. We know what we, what we want and how to approach situations. And all these new people coming in, they're going to be the 21 year old kids that are fucking horny as fuck. And they're going to jump into the club and just go nuts. And this is what we're seeing. Hey, on, should I tell them about, about the dog analogy? What? The what? Could I tell them about my dog story? Yeah, go, go for yeah. it. Yeah. For sure. Okay. This is a buddy of mine, and this is eight eons ago. So oh. he had this theory, uh, and it worked out probably 10% of the time. I'm going to buzz so, you. <laughs> so when he, it was one in the morning, he would ask the girls, the hot chick, you know, they're sort of tired, they're a little bored, they've had a couple drinks. So would you like to fuck? <laughs> get that Nine out of 10 times, he would get slapped or the beer get thrown in his face. But he liked the odds at 10%. All right. He is an old guy. So, so just to kind of frame this into, into trading, <laughs> the, whole, the whole psychology behind it. Oh, my God. 10% hip or done. Yeah. So. The whole psychology is, is, is you got to be patient, you know, like in, like in you know, the real world with interacting with human, with people for, for social purposes. You, you have to spend the time to really train yourself to be patient. Because when you're patient and you see the setup, then you'll know when it's time to actually go in and, 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 and do it properly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's, it's the same thing. It's just in trading. Cause like, you know, I've received quite a few DMS uh, over the weekend. Um, you know, some traders have blown up some traders are, you know, kept on going in early. They think it's, this is the right opportunity. They kept on adding to the loser. And then all of a sudden they're, they're down a large amount. Yeah. Um, and, and that's the same in a social setting where, you know, you think it's an opportunity but you didn't, but you start nibbling, but then you start going in too quick, too large, too thick. And all of a sudden, you know, you you're the schmuck that bought all the beers for the girl and she's yeah. not going home with you. <laughs> yeah. So, so the thing is, is, you know, gotta, gotta be patient, wait for the setup. And usually the setup, you'll know what the setup is when you see it, but it's uh -huh. not there yet. It's not there yet. And that's why, like, I've done little things even for myself, because, you know, I still have FOMO. Like I get into stupid situations where, mm -hmm. where I, you know, I add in a little too much size and I get kicked out. Right. But, you know, it's because I put those stops in to kick me out. Um, but, but, you know, that's why, like, I even created a FOMO button. Like I know this is FOMO. So I should just go one share. I tried going mm -hmm. long one share for a while, but then, you know, it did, it worked well for me, but you know, sometimes I forget because I'm a short bias trader. So I created a FOMO one share button to go short. Um, for me, it's just, again, it's a psychology where you have to force yourself to wait and you'll know when it's broken. You'll know when it's ready. hundred percent. You'll see it. You've seen it so many times, even for long traders. Like I, I'm not a very good long trader, you know, but, but you'll know when it sets up for you. You'll just know. hundred percent. Right. And it's, it's all that discipline. Right. And it's just really waiting for that, waiting for that feeling of, you know, everyone, everyone's been early once before, and let's say, you know, it, it's very easy to be caught early shorting, you know, it's easy as long as well, but, you know, let's say, you know, you get this kind of move up and, you know, you take some cause it just kind of moved up and then it starts going against you and you stop out and then starts going against you a little more and then you stop out again mm -hmm. and then you get, and then you see it just tank mm -hmm. and you know that that next pop is, and all longs are just going to be screwed on it. How have you just waited for that certainty feeling, that feeling of, I know, you know, I know, I know. That just saves you so much mental capital rather than, you know, getting in this boxing match and just getting your ass kicked on the way up, you know? So I think it's really that feeling deep down that you get where you kind of like, it's like, you know, you know that you've won the battle before you've even started to, to fight, you know? hundred percent, a hundred percent. Like, dude, have you guys ever been like talk, talking to a girl, right? You meet a random girl, whatever, you talk to her and you just know right away that it's not going to work out. You know, right away that this is, you're not a good match. Right. Whereas like, and I'm sure like a lot of you can attest to her, like Mary, but like even with me, like when I talked to my girlfriend for the first time, like I was like, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I feel like I'm in the driver's seat. I'm confident that this is going to work. And I feel like that's a lot of trading. It's just like, I get a lot of DMs of people like, dude, how do you, how does guys like Alex accept the risk? How do they do this? How do they know when it's the right moment? And it's kind of like, 
there comes a point where you just do, you just know, and you're willing to put on the size and you're willing to accept the risk because you're in the driver's seat and you're confident in the setup. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Totally, totally agree. It's the exact same analogy. And, you know, sometimes you, you don't take it off the screen. That hot chick not working for you, you take it off the screen, you don't ever look at it again. It's not your style. It's not your setup. And, and that's, that's a good risk management decision. I know I do that all the time now when I see it where it's like too freaking early. Like, I am not going to look in that direction at all. We're going to go over here and just going to wait it out for another two or three hours. And if I miss, I miss. I've got other plays to do. Yep, and that's true. And when you know, you know, you'll lay it on thick. You'll dump it in, you know. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Someone and, uh, get the no. out for that one. Get the, get the button. <laughs> I, I think he was quick. I, I, he's just too quick. He snuck it in there. But I, you know, and on like something I wanted you to talk about too is like you've gotten in my head about the nibble, the nibble idea, right? The nibble and yeah. dump is what you yeah. call it. And I think that that's something I'd like you to kind of go over, like because and, and use an analogy because I think it's such a good concept. So, so again, the nibble, the nibble analogy is it's very simple. Like I, I've you know again we all struggle, and I've struggled with getting in too large too early, or get, even getting in early, and that's why even even when you think it's almost time, I really go small. Like I, I go small mm -hmm. and I nibble small, like, you know, one share, 10 shares, you know, if I'm really desperate, maybe a hundred shares, but, but you go really small and you can do it a couple times. Like I, and that's why I created that one share button just to make sure I always keep it on that one share button default. And if I really have to go, I'll do one share for now just to see how it works. Um, and, and a lot of times, it won't work the right way. You know, it keeps on going up and, and, and that one share, and it looks, it looks like it's parabolic. It looks like it's ready to, 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 to break. And, and then when it does, you know, you start being seeing that big red candle, uh, you can put a couple more one shares on. Um, um, but, but when it doesn't come back and hit those shares up, you know, it's time. And that's when I start, you know, I change my share sizes to like 500, a thousand, and then you start dumping it in. Yeah. But, but it's it's just it's just you have to wait and you have to you have to deal with your own demons deal with your own demons and it's just like you know it's just like in dating you got to deal with your own demons you can't just gung-ho jump in and be the the guy that 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 is in everyone's face you know trying to trying to trying to throw lines out everywhere because it doesn't work a lot of times yeah you don't you don't want the re her to file a restraining order on you yeah, yeah. you don't want that i mean <laughs> so, so, well <laughs> How many times has that happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's but, when you've blown up. <laughs> yeah, but the thinking again is 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 you know, you know, put a little bit of feelers out there if you need to, but yeah. you'll know you'll know when it's time, and and it's just like you'll know when it's time that you know you met somebody and there's chemistry. You'll you'll just know, and that's the thing. Yeah, that's, I love that and. And how, how is this analogy? Cause it, you, you guys have used this analogy for a long time of the whole dating thing. And how is this like directly, like, is, is there something that you can tell that if you didn't think about it this way before to now, how has it impacted your trading and like, what, how is it making you better? Like what is like the best thing you've gotten from kind of like transitioning your thinking into this? Well, uh, so, so great question. Uh, we are all evolving creatures, you know, we're going through an evolution in our, in our lives, right? Like even Bao and even Alex, even till yep. today, Bao and Alex are evolving as traders, right? I mean, Bao, yep. Bao started as a, uh, you know, a, an OTC trader. Then he evolved over to, you know, small caps. He evolved to, sw you know, swinging things overnight to now only trading certain things at certain hours, right? And, and stopping because of zombie time. Those are those are steps of a person's evolution and, and, and self realization. Yeah, we do that all the time when we interact with people. We do that all the time. So the same thing applies to trading: is that you know you start picking up on cues that work and don't work, and, and you, you learn from others. But but one of the most successful things that that do work for for traders is is you you realize where your weaknesses are. Is is my weakness putting too much laying it on thick too thick too too early if it is let's break that habit let's not lay it on too thick create all these barriers use the technologies that are there to, yep. to lay it on thick yeah i i mean you know yeah. i think you know that's the thing when on and i first met we were 
I think we had this constant issue like, yeah, we'll stop at 1030. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, we'll stop at 1030. And then, yeah. you know, it's like, like, well, now we're going to suck on the battery if we go past 1030. And that's what we were doing at first. And we were forcing each other and yelling and screaming at each other over the phone. And, you know, you know, and, you know, we deserved it. I know I did a lot. Yeah. Of time. Yeah. And, and, but thank goodness he did. He was there to like, you know, it's, it's like staying at the bar till three in the morning and coming home with nada. You know, need a wingman. Yeah, so, you need a wingman to pull you out of there. Yeah, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's like, that's not your niche. Why are you doing it? Why do you keep doing it if you keep losing? And, you know, I had to get slapped around and realize that's where I would lose. So I don't need to go there. I don't need to go to that bar. I don't need to go to that place. You know, yeah. I need to focus on my little niche. Yeah. And I think that's exactly think like, it. Yeah. And think of my secretary, right? Taking my laptop away at like 1030. Yeah. You know what that yeah. is? That's my buddy yanking me out and saying, dude, it's time to go home. Yeah. Dude, yeah. You, you, you've done enough. It's time to go home. Yeah. I, 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 I don't have the discipline or I didn't have the discipline back then. You know, dude, it's time to go home. Yeah. It's so totally, totally it. Totally. It. I love and, that. And, you have and to have those guardrails. I, lo I love that. And, and how did you, I guess, then get the confidence to, again, using this analogy, to not only size up, but then to lay it on thick when the moment came? Like, how did you know, you know, because I, I know it was something that's impressive about you guys is like P&Ls, like you got big P&Ls, right? And that's awesome. And, and, but you get that by sizing up and, you know, having the confidence. And, and what was it that gave you that over time? Because I've seen you both kind of develop really a lot recently, too. So what was it that really contributed to that? So, so I'm in a field where, you know, my training is that you have to learn it and learn it well before you do it. And then before you do it well, right? Like when I stick mm -hmm. a needle yeah. in someone's spine or if I, you know, I've been putting these little implants in people's spine so, so they can, it can lift up their, their, the bones in their spine a bit so they can walk better because it doesn't compress on the nerves. Right. So, so the question is, when do you go and do that and do it for real versus uh, like do, do it like, you know, on, on a patient versus, uh, you know, a cadaver, right? Um, it, it's all about, it's all about building that, that mental memory and that muscle memory. So, so in trading for me, it's, it's about, I've, I've recognized where, where, through, you know, my mental memory, right? That yeah. at a certain point, I know it's gonna break and it does. And at a certain point, I know where my profitability, likelihood of profitability is gonna be if I do certain things, like start dumping in. And, and, that's, and that's it. And then it's, it's just, it's, it's mental memory. You go into muscle memory, right? And you start, you start small, right? You start small, but you go into muscle memory where when my mental memory triggers that this is gonna work, your muscle memory says, okay, click, 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 short, short, short. Right. And, and then that's, and that's how you do it. But then you, and you just gradually size up afterwards. Don't think of the number. Think of, think of the reflex. Think of the, think of the reflex, the scenario, because it repeats itself every damn day. You just have to look for the right opportunity. Yeah, he, so he, bring, he brings up such a good point. And I hope people catch that. And he's talking about, you know, as a doctor, you know, would you want him to do the first time on your back? ever for him to put that implant on you hell no, Fuck no. Fuck no. so it, it is him going into that cadaver and practicing it over and over and over until he gets it down some people will look at a chart and they get it but what you know a lot of other people do myself and on especially is freaking back test toss talk, tosh talks about all the time in his weekly webinar and so he's back testing until he gets it perfect so as a patient you want that doctor knowing how to do that back surgery and how to do it pro properly. And he's got it down to a reflex in his head and in his muscles. So, and, so, and, and, and I'll be honest with you, like I didn't realize the replay function on DOS until last weekend. And, yeah. and you know, I mean, I knew TOS had it and I've been playing with TOS, but with DOS, with the replay function, it's, it's phenomenal. Like I, I'd never thought that it would be to that degree. Yeah. You know? it's, it's, so, yeah, you're getting better on the weekends, and, and that's the way it should be. You know, you should get this down to a reflex because that will lessen the fear of FOMO when you're in that moment. So it's sort of like, you know, practicing your one-liners before you walk in the bar. 
that's what you're doing in a way, you know, and, and finding what works and getting that down to a reflex. So it, it's, it's, it's amazing that. what you've done. And, and if you really want to really es uh, escalate it and extrapolate it to dating, I mean, I don't know if you guys know, there's a whole sub-society of seductionists, of guys that are pickup artists, Jesus. right? No, but it's true. There is. <laughs> yeah. and, and there was like a, there was an era, I think a few years ago, where they were highlighted all over the place where, you know, these are the techniques that you can use um, to build your self-confidence, to, to hire your chances of finding a mate, right? Yeah. And, and again, I don't know all, all these tactics, but I can tell you it's, it's that mental memory leading to muscle memory, leading to that development of a reflex. And then that's when you're able to fine tune your, your ability to identify that it's not the right time to go in. And if you do go in, you just nibble or just drop a little seed here and there, see if it works. And if not, you're, you're fine. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so that, that's kind of the thinking there. Uh, I love that. Yeah. And go ahead, Woody. I'm sorry. No, I, I mean, you know, he makes a great point. I was thinking of the readings of Voltaire and that's, that guy goes back 400 years and how he was dating and how he would seduce women. So it, it's just like trading. You know, you can read some old books and it's the same thing. I mean, the candlesticks that comes from Japan from hundreds and hundreds of years ago. So it's there. It's just a matter of sitting down and reading it and getting it down to a reflex. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, give me one sec. I'm just going to go check on the kids real quick because apparently yeah, go ahead. I'm the only adult home right now. Hold on. <laughs> doesn't even know if his kid's there or not but yeah no I, and i i love that and like woody how do you how do you plan on growing from here like what is your, kind of your next your next steps as, as a trader because obviously as we said you're always growing and developing so how are you going to take this this analogy and, and compare it and use it to how you're going to grow you, you know i mean my my days and this is where bow and i are very similar we didn't know each other prior to mic but i'm an otc trader and i yeah. you know, like friday otc was all it um, and my biggest fear, and that's part of joining the MIC, was I was what I call myself a one-trick pony. Yep. All I knew was OTC, and all I heard prior to joining MIC was OTC is going to die. OTC is going to die. So for me, um, I'm all about having more than one trick. So my problem now is when I wake up in the morning, it's like, which one am I going <laughs> to trade today? So, yeah. so I'm trying to look at from that perspective, and I can't tell you how much I love it. I can make a thousand dollars on any system, but I have to be focused on only one. So my brain has to stay focused on that one. And that's the problem I'm having right now as an older trader. But I am not a one trick pony, you know, MIC has opened me to multiple levels. Yeah. And I'm very thankful, but now it's coming down to how do I focus on that one and be really good at that one. Because you know, as, as, as anyone else, when you have four or five stocks trading at once, it's hard. Well, now imagine yep. trading four or five different types of stocks, but there's three different types of setups and patterns for three different markets. Yeah. And, and that's where, I, like, at the end of the day, I'm like, okay, I got to go drink. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like we had three different cars. I just want to chime yeah. in real quick where, I mean, when you're, when you're older, sometimes it, like not necessarily being older, but when you're an older trader, you know, you've seen so much and it's so easy to kind of like get scarred from a prior memory or yep. you've seen yeah. something happen a million times and now it's not going this way. You know, it's like, you know, Tiger Woods after he friggin' crashed his car and got the divorce and he couldn't play golf anymore. There, Fuck that hooker. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a, there's a ton of, of things that, you know, that can happen to you. You can somehow feel that you're not doing as well. Like it's a performance sport and to perform at such a intense high level for so long, it really does take a lot of energy and a lot of effort. You know, like you look at Bao, like, like Bao is just like, for him to be able to still be on that level for how long he's been trading is. So he's Tom Brady. He's Tom fucking Brady. Totally insane because, you know, <laughs> There's so many times where you can get caught in like a, a squeeze and then you don't feel confident, you don't feel confident and you don't want to go back in, you don't want to go back in, you know? But, and, and you're like, yeah. is there something wrong with me? Is there something wrong with whatever? You start to second guess and then you kind of go down that alleyway as well. So 
I think necessarily being an older trader is not like, I mean, I've heard people before the, oh, I've been trading for 11 years. I know this game inside and out. But it's like, no, like it, it's constantly evolving. It's constantly adapting. It's constantly changing. And you need to really be on top of your game to just keep performing every single day and just being able to really give it your all to, to just push yourself forward, you know? You know, the, the one thing I can say that I, I've noticed a difference is like when I first joined MIC, um, I, w I was arrogant. There's no doubt about it. Um, you know, looking at you guys like, it's all freaking half my age. Well, that is the worst fucking thing I should ever have said. Because I have to humble myself and say, look, you know, you have to throw out what they are doing. You have to start from scratch. And it's even harder because you have to erase those memory reflexes. So you have to absolutely humble yourself. Val, he humbles himself every freaking day. He is constantly listening and adapting to it. Yeah, so yeah. I've had to relearn humility. And, and, you know, no doubt there were some questions in my head if I was going to pull it off. And I still have issues. There's no doubt about that. Um, but I'm still around. I'm still trying to do what I do. I got to keep my, you know, state absolutely humble or I will get slaughtered. You yeah. know, yeah. and it's, it's a, it, a young trader doesn't have that. And you all will see that in a couple of years. Like I've been doing this, you know, then my son's starting to trade and he's kicking y'all's ass and you'll be like, Oh, I'll teach him. And then all of a sudden you're in big trouble. So humility is absolutely key. And it's no different than when you go to the bar, the girls know instantly. If you're an arrogant SOB and they will drop you like a brick, it's the same thing. You've got to be humble. You've got to be cool about it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and truthfully, guys, I mean, just to kind of put it in very succinctly, it's not how long you've been trading. It's how well you've been trading. hundred yeah. percent. I know guys who've been trading for 10 years who still struggle. You know, it's not length is not, it has nothing to do with it. In my opinion, screen time. Yes. But, but no, I agree. It's it's how wired you and dude. Right right now, my struggle has been like I, I see everyone making boatloads of money all the time, and like to be honest, like and I've been doing well, but it's like, I'm just trying to outperform myself right now. Yeah. And like you were yeah. saying, it's like this is a humbling experience. I'm I'm looking at these charts and like, I know where I entered and know where I covered, and like you know, at, in a normal market stance, I would have had a, a much better cover or a much better entry. And and I think right now, like keeping your head down and keeping like focused on what you know is just so yeah. so important and keeping humble like like what he said yeah it, humility is so so important I, I mean i have to say it's one of the most important virtues it really really is yeah um, and i think that's what new traders have such an advantage about is that they are humble enough to sit down and read it and someone like me can be a little ass about like watching videos i mean on and i say to each other every morning we all start at zero we yep. all start. It doesn't make you need 10K yesterday or lost 10K yesterday. We all start at zero. And that's just a way of humbling myself saying, forget what you did yesterday. You're at zero. That's where you are yep. today. You have a chance of being bowed today. I'm not saying you're going to, but you have a chance. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's true. I mean, I mean, how many times have you had killer days or whatever, killer week, and then done something stupid and, and blew it up or lost it all? And like, like, I, I mean, I, I'm just, again, like I, I keep saying, I'm looking at these charts. These, these were A-plus setups for longs and shorts. Like, they really, seriously, I mean, there was a setup in there for everybody. And if you're too arrogant and you're too cocky, you just, you miss it. I mean, I, I have a, my background on my phone, I was telling Harry the other night, we're both trash, we're just laughing. But my background is a tweet from him that says, in between the lines, it's just noise. Um, and basically, like, that's what it is. Bow. Which is, yeah, one of Val's quotes, but it was, it was something Harry tweeted and I loved it. And it's my background because it just reminds me like in between the lines is arrogance and not having humility. It's, it's not patience and it's all the bad virtues. But if you can wait for your lines, you have all of those features and you have the best chance of success and, and uh, you'll take advantage of every opportunity. Yeah. Great, guys. You guys, cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to slowly wrap it up. Only reason why is kids are getting itchy upstairs and I'm going to take them upstairs. That's fine. No. <laughs> That's right. so so before we before we wrap it up so what what are the two from both of you uh biggest pieces of advice is for uh new traders and experienced and everyone kind of in mic um what do you want to start uh you know i can say and it's so simple and you know being an mic member is get a freaking tab 
just get a tab. I mean, it will, it will shorten that learning curve. Um, you know, when you ask educated questions to the moderators and they know that you've talked to other traders, you get so much more feedback. Um, yes, yes, I, you know, the tab manager, whatever, but there's so many guys that help this program make it what it is. It will shorten your learning curve and I will keep working with you guys until you find one. You know, I may not be the fastest at finding one, but I'm looking, I'm looking. So hit me up or, or you know, hit up the channel, whatever it takes, you know. And I love good karma. I mean, there's, yeah. like I said, there's some stories that just make it curve all toes. But yeah. it's, it's, it, it, is, it, is, it is also, I mean, I'm a true Darwinian. I'm a true Darwinian about adaptation to trading, adaptation to the market. This stuff with GameStop, it wasn't around a year ago. This is a new variable. We have to adapt to it, good or bad, long or short, whatever it is. Yeah. And, I love that. And, and my, my two cents, um, just because I've received quite a few texts from quite a few traders on, on getting hurt in the market, is um, risk management. Put in your stops. Put yep. in your stops. I mean, use technology if you need to to help you. To force the stops in, even if when you place an order. But whatever, however you do it, just put in your stops. Because you know what? Stops, stops keep you safe. Yeah, you lose a little bit of money, but stops keep you safe. And I'd rather, I'd rather make money um, than be than than be right, right? Because that, that's a very common phrase that you know, Bao and Alex. Yeah. over and over again you know your goal is to make money and to make money you can't lose money or you can't yep. lose money. so put in those stops because a lot of times yep. we're wrong and i'm wrong a lot of times too but the stops yep. are safe so i don't blow up did the, that's something i wanted to add before we kind of wrap up too is like i want to add I was, one thing before you yeah of course of course and, and i was just like i wrote this down for myself that i'm looking at these stocks and i'm seeing how small size can make you a lot of money but small size can also lose you a lot of money if you're not uh -huh. disciplined. Like, dude, on 2,000 shares, a 15 cent stop, right? If you're going by your line, 10 cent, 15 cents, 200 bucks, 250 bucks, who cares? Get a little slippage, 300 bucks. But if you have that and you protect your downside, the upside is so, I mean, 2,000 shares on, on JG. I mean, it went from 13 to, to four, five. I mean, you know, I, I'm not saying everyone holds the whole move, but you make thousands of dollars. And it is just protecting your downside and having keeping your arrogance level low and having stops and just being okay with being wrong. Yeah. yeah. That's so true. So true. Yeah, I agree with that as well, where it's like, you know, know the risk management, know when you're gonna stop out, don't be cocky, don't be arrogant, be humble. And also like don't like draw your lines at the start of the day and just leave them. You know, so many times people have FOMO, they start <laughs> adjusting things, they start doing things that aren't working. And then all of a sudden they're taking big losses and they're saying, well, I'm trading the lines, but you're not trading the lines that you drew before. You're just readjusting, redoing and, yeah. you know, changing things around. And that's leading to you, you know, not making money because when you're in a trade or when you're, when you have FOMO, when you're in those states, like you're, it's almost like you're drunk, right? You're, you're out of it. You're not thinking logically. You're thinking based off emotion. So it's really important that you just, you know, draw your lines, do what you had before in the pre-market when you were kind of sober. And then when you're kind of drunk or like drugged up or whatever, you know, I don't know how else to say it, but when you're in those states, don't readjust them and just do, do what you had planned, follow your plan and the money will come. But if you start chasing, moving around, adjusting things, you know, getting squirmy when the stocks move in a little bit, you know, you, you, you can't do that because that is why most people are losing because they have FOMO. Yep. They're they're thinking off the motion and they're not thinking logically. Yeah. yeah I like how many that, times like have that. you? Ad how many times have you adjusted a line to have it and hit your initial line and work out exactly. perfectly? Hundred yeah. percent. Billion. And and me and On were talking on the phone for a long time, and I re I remember the day when he we both just had a, it's like an epiphany all the time. It's like, dude, you just you wait for your line. If you're early, you get burned. You, if you're early, you get burned, no matter what, long or short, you can get burned. But if you have the discipline and the patience and you can kind of keep yourself in check, I mean, the, the, the sky's the limit in this. And, and I, think that, I think that you using these analogies that kind of uh, On and Woody have brought to light is, is great. And I think a lot of guys are going to benefit from it, like tremendously. Yep. 100%. Well, actually, it, he, Eric brought a great point. It, it, you know, the lines are equivalent to beers. So the more you beers you have that means the further lines you're going and that's the further you're denying your reality and the stronger the emotion comes out 
So Love being that. drunk can be equal to being emotional. Yeah. Perfect. So you have to learn when to cut yourself off at the bar. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. You can't do it. Call your buddy, yeah. aka Tab, and, and make them yell at you. Yeah. And pull you off the bar. Yeah. 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 I, have your buddy pull you out of the bar. Yeah. Then I, on you had to pull me out of the bar a few times. <laughs> a few times we've been there. <laughs> but no, but thank you guys for coming on. I think that hearing from experienced traders and, and guys who are a little older sometimes gives people, especially younger guys or even like me, it gives me like reassurance that, you know, you're heading the right direction and and things are good. And so I would love to have you guys back even we can talk about more stuff. I know people are gonna love this. So thank you guys. Well, so to be honest, I really hate you and Harry. I really do hate you guys <laughs> because y'all are so freaking young and you have not gone through the crap that on and I has gone through. And so you, the world is your freaking oyster. It really is to be so young and have the world being your oyster and have your passion and you can make money at your passion. I hate you. I really do. That's just somewhere <laughs> we'll leave. You know I, what? I, Let's know how much we hate you at the bar. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like the young guy is still the hot chick. Yeah, whatever. We get to use okay. your battle scars and, and keep it going. But well, thank you again, guys. And right. yeah, thanks, let's go again. Okay. All right, appreciate it. Be safe. Later, guys. Yeah.